Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, which is November 23rd. Today, I want to cover something with you that is going to be a huge revelation if you grasp what I'm trying to say in just these few minutes. We're going to read today from Hebrews 9, verse 25 through 28. And although you should read the entire chapter, uh, in order to get a true grasp on the points I'm trying to make here. I want you to realize that past sins are, forgov are forgiven because Jesus established what we commonly refer to as the New Covenant or the New Testament. I mean, it's just another testament. It's just another name for covenant, which is another name for a will. And God, through Moses, established the first covenant or his will uh, to be done on this earth at the time of Moses. Uh, this was God's will, and it was established because he loved his man and mankind so much, Adam and the descendants of Adam, that God wanted to establish the basis for him to continue to dwell among his people, and that was in the first tabernacle. And because of God's holiness. He showed Moses how to create this tabernacle to establish the Holy of Holies where he could dwell and the people could come and inquire of him. And uh, the high priest once a year would go in and offer blood sacrifice for the forgiveness of all the people. This was done because it was patterning the uh, sacrifice of animals that God made in the garden to cover man uh, with the skins of animals. These innocent animals were killed to cover Adam's nakedness. Adam's sinfulness was revealed through his nakedness. And to cover that so God could continue to dwell with his people among man, uh, the blood of animals had to be sacrificed. And, you know, they were cr killing animals you know, all the way up through the, the period of uh, when they were enslaved in Egypt and all the way up to the days of Moses, animals were being killed to create a covering for man. This was representative uh, of the blood sacrifice that Moses established of animals and the sprinkling of blood uh, to cover the sins of the people. And it was representing that first covenant. All right. Now, since we have the first covenant, and it was established by innocent animal blood, then there would have to be a new covenant pattering the same thing by the shedding of blood. But this time, it was to be perfect blood, without sin or created in the likeness of sin. And that's why a virgin had to give birth to God dwelling in the flesh. And that's where Jesus was born. And Hebrews 10.26 shows us, for then must be often be often enough, uh, suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Jesus is God manifested in the flesh, born through the Virgin Mary, living a perfect life, showing people how it's done, basically, showing them the things that belong to them through the will of God in the first covenant. But the time came when God said, now is the time that I have to die for the sacrifice of sins for all time so that these men, the mankind, the believers could live. And that established what we call, when Jesus died, it established the New Covenant or the New Testament, which is a new will. A testament is the will of a person who has died. There is no law in effect of putting a will into effect while that person is still living. I mean, if I have a will dwelling on this earth, it is only in force if I die. I can go back and change it. I can go back and amend it before I die. I can have a will that gives all of my possessions to one person, and then on my deathbed, I realize I'm going to die. You know, I, I, want, I want to be a blessing to other people. I can call a lawyer in, have it changed. 
I sign it. He takes it down and presents it to the courthouse, and it's stamped and verified. It's now official. And when I die, they can bring this old will up in court, at probate court, and say, this was the will. This is his will. And the lawyer will say, no, this law, this this testament, this will was established prior to his death, and this one supersedes the first one. And the judge says, yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you grasp what that means? Those who want to just hold on to the old covenant, it has no effect. They can claim the sacrifice of blood, animal blood, forever and it does them no good at all. Only the new covenant, only the new testament, only this new will is the only one that will be recognized by the judge. And bless God, guess who the judge is? He's the one that wrote it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, you know, that means, and I'm going to summarize this really quickly so this doesn't get too long, that, Oh, how can I say this, Lord? From the creation of mankind, back in the Garden of Eden, up into the cross, all the, from the Garden to the cross, Jesus paid the price for all sins up to that point in time. That's why he was able, when he was descended into hell, he led captivity captive, Scripture says. You know, those being held in that area called paradise, they've been looking for their Messiah. He said, do you believe I'm the Messiah? And they, they've been observing everything going on. They said, yes. And he said, let's get out of here, boys. And he led them out of the region of hell and escorted them into heaven when he went to heaven. But there was also a period of time when he was present on the earth. He was showing himself to his disciples and others after the resurrection, but before the ascension. This was the present for those that believed. And we see Jesus had paid the price for those living in that present time. Whenever you first believe, that's when Jesus paid the price for your past sins and your present sins. Glory to God. Whatever you're going on at that time when you first believed. That means from the cross to the, or from creation to the cross, all sins for the believers were forgiven. That means from the cross to whenever you believed, all of your sins were forgiven. And that means from the point you believed until you die or Jesus comes back first, your future sins are forgiven because those people in the present, their sins were forgiven. And for every person who believed from the cross, their sins are forgiven as well. Amen. Glory to God. When you get a grasp of that, you can't help but to be blessed in all that you do. And praise God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed, folks. We'll talk to you tomorrow.